Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have Valentine's Day Dollar Tree DIYs for you and the theme today is going to be conversation hearts or the little candy hearts for Valentine's Day. All of my DIYs are going to incorporate that. So for the first DIY I'm going to use one of these large jars from the Dollar Tree. I love these things. They're so versatile. I'm actually going to make mine into a little conversation heart vase by putting another little glass Dollar Tree candle holder down inside to kind of form a vase within a vase so that I can fill it up with some of the candy hearts. Now this particular one was just the right size, but I don't really need the handle or anything on there. So I just went ahead and took that one off. And the jar itself is really a kind of a nice size. I thought I could make a really cute little Valentine's Day flower arrangement. Now I go ahead and put it in there because I kind of need to bury it down within the conversation hearts and this also is beneficial because you're going to use less of the little candy hearts because you're only filling up the sides even though like the appearance of the floral arrangement it's going to look like the whole thing is filled with the little candy hearts now this was good because it took less but also a little tricky because you kind of have to like put them in there kind of like piece by piece as you can see me doing and I was trying to like randomly do the colors and stuff like that. You'll see today we're going to be using lots of the conversation hearts. It seems like green and yellow are like the most common colors for some reason. I had to keep opening bags to get like different colors. But these are all your standard colors. I was not able to find any of the conversation hearts at Dollar Tree, even though they normally carry some. Maybe not brand name, but they had nothing so i had to go to target to get mine um they actually had a good sale going on 25 percent off on these so that helped with these diys but both of the jars and the florals that you see there are um, both from the dollar tree and i'm just going to go ahead and keep filling it until i get to like the rim of the little jar or candle holder that's inside don't necessarily want to have any fall inside, but I want it to look really full like that. Now for the florals, I'm just gonna take a little piece of that floral foam from the Dollar Tree. Um, I had a scrap piece that fit perfectly inside. And then these are the florals that we're using. They're kind of like a pink and yellow. And I thought that would go nice with like the pink and the yellow little conversation hearts. So we're going to use a couple um, sprigs of these to kind of fill it up. I want it to look really full. Initially, I wanted to do like a pink rose, um, but I couldn't find anything like that at Dollar Tree. The only thing I could really find was some really premium like red rose uh, arrangements like at Dollar Tree Plus. And that totally wouldn't go. So I like the colors on these. I think it's going to work well. It's going to look really nice and springy and fun for Valentine's Day. So I was able to use almost two. Um, I think I used all but one on this one and filled it completely up. Now, since it was a jar, it has like the screw on part on the top and I kind of want to mask that. So I'm going to use some of this adorable pink heart ribbon from the Dollar Tree and we're just going to cut that down to size and just glue that over the little screw part there of the jar just to kind of give it a little bit more of a finished thing. And we're going to be using a lot of like powder pink in some of these DIYs. I tried to do like a, um, a lot of pastels and conversation hearts. And I think they turned out really adorable for Valentine's Day decor. I have done some conversation heart DIYs before and I really liked them. So I thought this would be a great theme to decorate some areas of my home for Valentine's Day. And this is how our first DIY turned out. Our little spring floral arrangement with a jar full of candy hearts. You can kind of tell already, a lot of green in those. I wonder why there's a more of one color than the others, but isn't that so pretty? I think it turned out adorable. 
Now for the next DIY, I found a, a soft pink candle holder from Dollar Tree, and we're also gonna use one of their little floral cones. I wanted to do a candy heart tree, and so I kinda want it to be pointy at the top and not cut off like the foam is. And you're also gonna be able to see through the candy hearts and I don't want you to be able to see the styrofoam. So we're gonna use some of the white glitter cardstock from Dollar Tree and we're gonna wrap it. It's gonna solve both of those problems. So I'm just kinda of trying it out for size. I'm gonna go ahead and glue down the first corner here onto the styrofoam comb and wrap it until I get like a point at the top instead of that blunt end but just enough to kind of cover it where I can kind of do a straight seam here right here on the back so I trim off my excess cardstock and this was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be and it turned out so cute so I do a bead of hot glue just rolling that on top to glue that down and I do have a seam again but it doesn't really matter it's all going to be covered up with some of those little conversation hearts then I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess paper um, right here at the bottom just trimming it down until I get to the foam and at this point it's pretty lightweight but in the end it's actually a pretty substantial piece with a lot of weight and stuff to it I'm going to start at the very top. I didn't get my point directly um, smooth, but we're going to cover that up with candy hearts, so I think it'll be okay. So starting at the top, I'm just going to take my first one and kind of cover up that like area that was kind of open. And only two is going to fit on the first row. And I'm just using hot glue, making sure to squeeze that down to make sure it's good and secure. Um, they will stay on paper, but as you can see, you definitely have to make sure they are stuck before you like kind of stop with each one. So I made sure I got each one attached really well. And then I am hot gluing them around. This row has room for about three. Um, you have that white glitter paper behind it, so it's okay if you have some gaps. Now for the third row, as you can see, I'm kind of alternating them. So they'll kind of fit in the grooves from the one on top and just trying to fit that in going around. It's not always gonna work out perfectly, but um, it was actually pretty easy as long as I kept a row at a time to build it and kind of nestle the next one and then just start going around it. As you can see, I do a dot of hot glue. I found the easiest way for me to put it together was to put the hot glue directly on um, the paper and you can get away with doing a couple at a time but again you have to really make sure that you have it glued down because you don't want those popping off later right so we're going to speed this way up because this was a little bit time consuming i would say i think it took me about 30 minutes to glue all the little conversation hearts to the tree um, I know they're candy and we are DIYing with them and so this one um, we are going to be able to seal a little bit to try to make this a little bit more permanent and we've got about half of it done. What I'm doing is just trying to um, alternate colors. I don't really want to match like the colors to the sides or to the top like above it and so trying to just keep it really random. There was like I don't know like five different colors. And I just kept building this. Now it turned out so cute that I'm kind of tempted to go craft some more of these and kind of display them together. I just love the way they look on the little candle holders. Um, I did Valentine's Day trees last year with like a more glam look, but this is definitely a sweet look. I really think this would be cute paired with your regular decor or you could mix it in with other Valentine's Day stuff. It's super sweet and of any candy for Valentine's Day, this is the one that reminds me of Valentine's Day, which was why I was really surprised that I couldn't find any at Dollar Tree. Um, they were kind of perplexed why they didn't have any as well. Now Target also had the mini conversation hearts that come in the little boxes. I'm not sure if they're the same size. They might be because these are called tiny conversation hearts too. But these are the Brock's brand, and um, they're pretty good with writing on most of them. And I just keep going until I really have no more room. If I can fit it a little bit crooked here on the bottom, I do. Otherwise, I just leave it. 
and I just filled it up as much as I could. So this is what the little conversation heart tree looks like at this point. And I want to be able to reuse this candle holder later, so I'm not actually going to attach it to it, but you totally could if you wanted to. At this point, it's nice and heavy duty. It's no longer foam and paper. I do want to seal it to make it a little bit more permanent. So I have some like matte finish sealer spray paint, and I am just going to do one quick spray of paint all over to kind of seal that. I was a little worried that the ink on the little conversation hearts might bleed, but it definitely didn't. And I did, do think that it helped, um, you know, seal it, make it a little bit more permanent. Some of the DIYs, I was able to seal it today, but some of them I didn't really need to. But this is how it's going to go on my candle holder. And this is how it turned out. Now you can see the one reason I wanted to cover the cone is because you can see the little gaps in between and that white glitter paper looks really cute back there but you could use like white poster board as well. And it definitely gave me a great cone shape on this which made it look really sweet. You can kind of see how big it is there um, from that small cone. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Okay, next Valentine's Day DIY. I have one of these little Dollar Tree frames and I'm just going to go ahead and remove the hanger from the side because I'm going to be making a vertical project. I usually save those for other DIYs. I chose this one because it had the light wood um, frame and I thought that would work well. I do want the background to be white though and I want it to be like really white. So I just grabbed some white cardstock and it's almost the perfect size like a regular eight and a half by 11 but I did need to trim it down ever so slightly and that's gonna give me a great white background without having to paint it and covering up that dark wood. And I wanna do a really fun like candy heart collection um hanging like you would kind of see um when you display a collection of scientific things like bugs i've done it with shells different things like that and so i'm just gonna put a layer of mod podge all over the back i try to do kind of a thick coat because the cardstock is a little bit heavy duty and then just lay that right on top. I'm not gonna seal the top of it. I don't think it really needs it. And I really like the matte finish of the paper. I just wanted a plain white background on this. I thought about painting the frame light pink, but I decided against it, but I think it would look really cute too if you did that with a pastel. But I'm just making sure it's all smoothed down and it, can dry but I also need to start mapping out kind of where I want to put all the candy hearts because I want it to look like a grid so I had to break out my ruler and first I'm going to kind of find like the middle of the sign so I can center the first row and then I had to kind of calculate about how much I need I went like one and a half inches and I'm going to go down and do as many rows as I think is gonna look really good. And so that's like the center line. And then I was trying to decide how many I wanted. I was thinking whether I wanna do three across or if I want to do a five across. And I decided to do five. I think it looks good that way. But it's just a matter of kind of mapping it out. I was having to use my brain here for some math skills. I was like, okay, yeah and try to make it even. I'm just wanting them to be kind of centered, but I want them to all be equal distance away from each other. And I think mine was like one and a quarter inches apart, side to side was what I decided. And so I have my first row mapped out and I think that's gonna be really good. Now I'm gonna have to go ahead and do the same thing here for the other rows. And I can kind of use um, the dots that I have on there as guide. I guess another way you could do this is you could design your grid with dots on it, print it out on the cardstock, and then you wouldn't have to do all the measuring. That might be an easier way to do it. But I already have it on there, so I'm just gonna do some calculating put my little dots on there so I'll know exactly where to glue each one of the little candy hearts down. So I think that process probably took longer than like the entire DIY. 
Now I do want to like alternate colors if I can. As you can see, I'm kind of getting down to the greens and the yellows. That's what I was kind of meaning by there's way more of those than everything else. But I do want a variety in each row. I don't really want to do white because I do have the white background on this one. But just kind of going ahead and lay them all out so that I can kind of map it out before I glue them down. And just trying to do a variety. I did do probably more green than anything else. That's when I realized I had an overabundance of green. But I wanted to spread them out as well. So we're going to do a total of five and we did four rows. So now I can kind of move them out of the way so I can see my dots exposed there. And I can go ahead and start gluing these on. You can do a couple at a time without your hot glue drying if you have a hot glue gun. I went ahead and did all five dots because I thought I could easily just move those, pushing those down, making sure they're glued tightly. If they do pop off, you can always um, put another drop of hot glue and get them attached pretty easily. I'm glad I decided to do like the white cardstock on the back because you can see how bright that white is. And it would have taken quite a few coats of white paint to get that good a coverage, I think. So there's our second row. I just glue it down. That's what I mean about the measuring process probably taking longer than the entire DIY because this part was super easy. And it's just such a cute, easy little DIY. You could... Um, hang this kind of lean it against a wall I think that's what I'm gonna kind of do kind of lean it against the wall with some of my Valentine's Day decor and it's just super easy but super sweet our little Valentine heart sign and you can see all the little messages on there they don't stamp them on there very evenly do they I don't guess they ever really did <laughs> but I did try to make sure they all had words on them and that the words were like all pointed up very few of them didn't have words but there were a few that didn't and this is how this one turned out I think it was really fun now for the next DIY I'm going to use a Dollar Tree vase and another pastel candle holder this one is kind of that bluish green color that I thought really looked nice with all those green conversation hearts we have there and I am going to go ahead and attach this one because I'm going to have a candle in it. So I do want this one to be sturdier than I did the tree. So whenever I glue glass, I really like to use like E6000. And so I have a little tiny bottle of that, which I'm going to put right around the edges where the vase is going to come into contact with the candle holder. And I just do a thin bead all the way around. And then I'm also going to use a combination of hot glue to kind of get it glued on for right now. I do a rather thick coat inside. I don't really want the glues to mix together, but just enough to kind of catch it, hold it on there until the E6000 has time to dry. But E6000 and glass and like ceramics like this, it works really well. You're going to get a really nice permanent bond. I'm just wiping off any excess of the E6000 that might have seeped out from placing that on there. And this is what we have so far. Super cute. I wanted to fill this up with conversation hearts too. So I'm just going to go ahead and just start filling it up. If you wanted to use less of the conversation hearts, you could always put a smaller uh, cylinder or candle holder upside down inside of it. I'm going to go around the edges kind of like we did with the flower arrangement. But I have plenty of these, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill this up. And then we're going to top it with a candle. So easy to do and so cute. For a flat candle, I'm going to be using one of these little floating candles from the Dollar Tree. They're nice and short. And just pop that right on top. I did think about putting a candle holder inside a candle holder and like actually floating the candle. But I really decided I just wanted the candy and not the water. But I do think I have too many in there because I want there to be sides for the candles so it's a little bit safer. So I did dump a little bit of them out to make it a little bit shorter and then add my little floating candle right on top. I love those candles. I think they are great. I do, do love using them for floating too. But how quick and easy of a DIY is that for Valentine's Day? You've got all your fun candy hearts. You've got a candle, a pastel, a little candle holder. I think it's really cute and it coordinates really nicely with the other DIYs that we made so far today. 
And this would look really cute on the pink one as well that we did for the tree. I was thinking pastels. Now for the next DIY, I have a little wood heart that I got at Dollar Tree, a little pink bucket that I actually got at Dollar Spot. Um, they do have these, of course, at Dollar Tree, but I really liked this pastel color. And I want to try turning this little wood heart into like a little candy heart topiary. So I got a dowel also from the Dollar Tree. I just cut mine down a little bit because it was a little bit too tall. And then the tricky part is trying to drill a hole right into the tip here. I did notice it was a little bit challenging. I did put some wood underneath of it to kind of get some leverage. But once I got it started, it wasn't too bad. So my first drill bit though was totally not wide enough. And um, that dowel is a little bit wider. So I switched um, drill bits here and um, went in and made it a little bit bigger and we were able to like get it to fit nice and snug inside to make it the structure of the topiary. Now, like normally a topiary would be like a plant or something like that, but ours is gonna be the little conversation hearts. I think that's gonna be so cute. I put a little dot of hot glue in there and then just put that in there. I got a nice um, firm hold and now it's just a matter of kind of painting it to kind of make a blank canvas because between the conversation hearts that we're gonna attach, you're gonna be able to see through it kind of like you could on the little conversation heart tree that we made. And we're gonna be covering the top, the bottom, both, even the sides with the candy heart. So I went ahead and painted all the surfaces of it, just white acrylic. I'm also painting most of the dowel too, because you're gonna be able to see that poking out of the pot. And I really love how this turned out. I think it's so cute. Hey, check out my new drying gun. My drying gun um, bit the dust. And so I got this new one on Amazon. I love the color. I think it's so pretty. Now it's time to decorate this. This was actually kind of like a lot smaller than the tree, so it definitely wasn't as time consuming. But I'll show you my strategy for gluing on the candy hearts to this. I was going to at first do rows like we did before. And I guess I did technically do that, but like it's kind of a bent row to kind of go with the shape of the heart because the bottom is gonna be lower and even on the top, it's gonna to be like lower right there dipped. And so I am doing a row. Um, I did three on the bottom five on the next one, but as you can see, that middle piece goes down a little bit. And I'm just gonna do as many as I can fit. This one, I can fit another one. It does slightly overlap the edges, but I think that's okay. So we're gonna do a total of seven on this row. I do want it to have as many on there as I can get attached. But to keep everything centered, I do start there in the middle and then just keep gluing those out. You can do a couple at a time, as long as you make sure that your hot glue is still nice and hot before you attach them. And just like before, I'm trying to alternate colors, trying not to repeat colors next to each other, because um, I do want it to look really random. Up here at the top, I can only fit about, um, I think a total of seven on this top row, with that little piece going down a little bit in the middle, gave me the perfect heart shape. So this is what we have so far. And I told you we were gonna cover the back, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this same exact thing here with the back. That plan worked really well, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing back here. I kinda know about how many rows I'm gonna need. So I went ahead and did the center first, and then we're just gonna fill it up with candy hearts. Now that little wood heart was like sort of thick, so there's plenty of room to cover the sides of it with the little candy hearts too, to kind of make it look the total effect. You know, we did the candy heart tree, so this is gonna be like a candy heart topiary. I thought about doing this with a foam ball, but the little foam balls that I can find at the Dollar Tree were a little small. I didn't think it would be that cute. I thought it would be cuter to be in the shape of a heart like this. So the front and the back is covered. It kind of looks like a sweet treat you wanna eat, doesn't it, on a stick? And then we can start working on the sides. I kind of made mine go like all the same direction, um, point side down. And, you know, depending on how much the other ones kind of overlap the sides, 
I kind of have to move it around, but I had plenty of room to glue everything down. And then we're just gonna do the same thing all the way around. It's okay that I didn't paint like the bottom of the dowel there because that's gonna be um, down in the floral foam, which I'm gonna use to hold this up. And this was actually a pretty easy DIY and I was really impressed with how well it turned out, super cute. So everything's covered. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my heat gun to try to get any of the little glue streaks of hot glue off of it. And just like the little tree we did before, I'm gonna go ahead and seal this to kind of make it look more permanent, hopefully hold up year to year. So again, I'm using the Rust-Oleum matte finish. I didn't want anything too glossy. And I'm just gonna spray both sides of that to get a good seal. And the matte finish still gives you that chalky texture that you want on your conversation hearts. Isn't it so cute? It does look like you could eat it. Now for the um, little tin, these little foam pieces from the Dollar Tree fit perfectly in these little tin buckets. The bucket's perfect. I don't have to do anything to it. Just go ahead and put the foam down inside. And then we can just take this dowel right here in the center of the foam, pushing it down inside, nice and sturdy. Then to cover up the green foam, I'm gonna be using more of those candy hearts, trying to use as many of those yellow and green ones as I can. And, but I will have to open up another bag if I do wanna get a few more colors mixed in there. But just filling it up till, you know, you can't really see any of the foam. And I think it turned out so cute. Now I did have um, the handle in the back, so I kind of switched that to the front by pulling that out and placing it back in. But this is how it turned out, our little conversation heart topiary. Very cute, very sweet, and really easy to do. I bet you didn't know there were so many DIYs you can make out of Valentine's Day candy. <laughs> I love it, I think it's so sweet. Hey guys, I wanted to let you know that I've introduced memberships here on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos, and it's a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. All you have to do is hit the Join button under today's video. Back to the DIYs. I found this great picture frame at Dollar Tree. It's actually like a soft pink leather. So I thought we could do a fun little conversation heart DIY on this. But I kind of want to do like a floating frame where it's just glass with no back to it. So I go ahead and remove the paper and the um, back of it. Also going to remove the little staples because I don't want you to be able to see those. And I just pull those straight out with my pliers. But I do want the glass in there and I want it to be like a conversation heart kind of suspended on the glass, which means we're going to need to make a stand since we don't have a back anymore. So I'm going to use some Dollar Tree craft wood and just cut it down a little bit wider than my frame. And since it's unfinished wood, I'm also going to go in and give it a coat of paint. I just used white acrylic on mine, painted the top and all four sides of that. And the frame's gonna be pretty lightweight, so I think there will it'd be pretty easy to attach the frame to that to do like a little um, kind of standing sign, if you will. That looks good, and now we can start putting together the heart. I was worried that if I put the heart on the glass directly, um, I was gonna have a hard time actually making it look like the shape of a heart. And so I'm gonna show you what I did to kind of um, make it more like the shape of a heart. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna do is just put a thin bead of hot glue along the inside of the frame and then glue the glass back in. Trying to push that down with a paper towel so I don't get too many fingerprints on this. And then I also um, am gonna have reinforce it a little bit with a little bit of extra hot glue on the back just to make it a little bit stronger. But I was trying not to do any of that where it was really visible from the front. But the pink leather frame is perfect for this. I love this color. It's like stitched, as you can see. Now, I have a little wood heart that's a perfect size. So I'm gonna use this for a stencil. And I'm just gonna use some white cardstock again. And this is just a wood heart from the Dollar Tree, a little ornament. 
And I use a pencil just to draw that out of my white cardstock. And I'm gonna actually glue down the white cardstock heart first and then add the candy hearts to it. So I still have that heart shape because I didn't think I was gonna be able to pull it off without a little bit of structure behind it to give it that shape. So I just cut that down the same size as that wood ornament. Then to attach it to the glass, I just do a coat of Mod Podge on the back of the paper heart. I love working with cardstock. It's so easy to Mod Podge and deal with. Um, as you can see, there's no wrinkling. Um, it's easy um, to keep working without having to let it dry and stuff like that. But I don't want it to wiggle around too much when I'm gluing the hearts on there. So I did heat mine up a little bit with my heat gun to try to help that dry a little faster. And then I thought we could fill it up with candy hearts. I am glad I decided to do the paper behind it because I really don't think it would have looked like a heart too much without that shape behind it. But I'm actually gonna do this one in rows. So I started the very base and just alternating colors. I'm gonna glue the little candy hearts up into the top of the shape. And then I'm gonna do rows to kind of fill out the rest of the heart. So I'm kind of laying them out, kind of seeing how many I can fit. I fit five in the first row. I can fit four in the second row. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this mirror image here on the other side. And again, trying to make my colors a little bit alternating. And then just do four dots of hot glue and glue down my little candy hearts. Whenever you can do multiple dots of the hot glue at once, it's gonna save you some time. Making sure they're all down, and now we can start on the next one. I can only fit three, and that's gonna fill out the heart. So I do three on each side, gluing those down. And this turned out really sweet and cute. You could always do this on a larger scale if you wanted to do like one of the eight by 10 frames or something like that from the Dollar Tree. That would be super cute too. And you could even hang it on the wall um, with like the glass um, frame, but I wanted mine to be like on a display. So that's why we've made this little stand here. It's just a matter of attaching it. Again, it's pretty lightweight. So I think hot glue will go a long way um, to glue it down. And I use the Gorilla Glue hot glue. It seems to work really well for projects like this. I am gonna do another bead of the hot glue along the back where you can't really see it, just to make sure it's super strong. And this DIY was actually really easy to put together. Very cute for Valentine's Day, and I love that pink leather frame and the appearance of the little floating candy heart here in the middle. This is how a mine turned out. Super cute. And the stand actually worked really well. I like uh, DIYing Dollar Tree frames like that. You can get some really cute looks. Isn't that so cute? Now for the next set of DIYs, we're gonna be doing a little conversation heart tear tray. I did this um, DIY a couple of years ago, but since it's conversation hearts, I wanted to go ahead and include it because there were some really cute DIYs with this. These are the little chalkboard hearts from the Dollar Tree. They are the perfect size to make a little garland to go along the side of my tear tray. I'm gonna be doing a big tear tray for this DIY, all three tiers. And this is gonna be for the second tier. I wanted to do garland along the outside of the tier. So the first um, set of two, I'm gonna do pink parfait acrylic. The second set I did Caribbean blue. I was trying to pick out like some pastel colors. And I'm just using a makeup sponge to uh, paint the back of these. These were the chalkboard hearts. I really like the size of these. You can kind of find these year round. Um, Sun Bright Yellow is the color of yellow that we're gonna use. And I had almost all colors of acrylic. I think I do use chalk paint here for the green one because I did have like kind of a soft green color. Um, and so that is this one. I think it's called Parsley. But basically any of the pastel colors. Working with all those conversation hearts on the previous DIYs, you could also do light orange, you could do white, you could do purple. There's actually not really blue ones, more green ones. <laughs> but that's what I did. And then for the vinyl, I just cut down red vinyl on my Cricut and did some fun little messages. 
I'm not sure if I have this cut file still. I'm gonna check to see if I do. If I do, I'll be sure to include it in the description below. But I just picked out really fun sayings that you would see on the little conversation hearts and cut those out of red vinyl. It was a little tricky to weed this because um, I think this was the Dollar Tree red vinyl, which, you know, can be a little tricky. I don't necessarily recommend it for Cricut. I do use it for crafting, but as you can see, definitely a little bit tricky um, to do the weeding. <laughs> but these are all the messages I came up with. Um, sweet pea, dream big, kiss me, love bug, true love, you rock, soulmate, ooh la la. I thought they were really fun. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my paper transfer paper to these and get these ready to decorate our little candy hearts. This is really fun. You could customize it. You could put names on it. You could put any little fun saying that you can think of. I went online and just tried to figure out fun sayings to go on conversation hearts. And when you DIY them like this, they turn out even cuter because you can kind of get them on there just right where the actual candy ones are kind of stamped a little bit crazy, right? So paper transfer paper, I get that on Amazon. I always have that linked in my Amazon shop under the Cricut um, store. And I love it. It works so great for Cricut vinyl. So again, I'm using the strings that came with it just tying that and then I can tie that on to my garland. I was trying to decide if I was gonna use a pink pom-pom garland. I thought that would be fun for Valentine's Day or a wood bead garland. And I ended up doing wood bead. Um, you could just use twine though, that'd be super cute too. But I made enough to cover the entire bottom tier. I do want them to kind of be equal distance um, between each one and I kind of calculated how many beads I need to skip before I tie them on. And as you can see, I just count how many beads I need. And this is the Dollar Tree wood bead garland. And then just tie my little candy hearts right on. That way they're all completely centered. But if you were just gonna use twine and um, tying them on like this, you can kind of move them left to right to get them exactly how you want. And this would be really cute as like a garland for a wall or a fireplace or something like that, a coffee bar even. And I just go all the way around until I get the exact right length. And I'm gonna go tie that on to my tear tray, again on the second tier. But first I do wanna trim off all of the excess twine from tying it on there, just to clean it up a little bit. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about my Facebook group. I always have it linked below. We would love to see you over there. I also have a Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest, and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube, and I'm active on most of those. Now back to the DIYs. I just wanted a sign, didn't really matter what it was. I actually had a Halloween sign left over from the Dollar Tree, but we're gonna customize it, make it our own thing. And this is kind of a great use for the Cricut vinyl from Dollar Tree, besides using it for your Cricut. You can cover things up. Now I just went ahead and peeled the paper because it was kind of loose on the top of this Halloween sign, but you don't, totally don't need to. And I'm gonna cut that like, really cute pink um, Dollar Tree Cricut vinyl down to a size to cover this up. I made it a little bit larger than the sign and laid it flat on there. As you can see, since I peeled um, the layer off underneath, it did a really good job of giving me just a plain background. And then I'm just using a sanding sponge to cut that off, giving me a perfect cut around all four sides of our sign. And I wanted to do a really cute like little love sign for my tear tray um, and incorporate some candy hearts on that as well. So I think that looks pretty good. It's a little glossy, but I think we can make it work. I want to add a love word and I found this really cute wood love word in this like little craft kit from the Dollar Tree. And it's got all those extra pieces in there I don't really need for this DIY but I love the little word love like that. It reminds me of the statue, the love statue in Philadelphia. We used to live there. My husband and actually, I actually lived in Philadelphia when we got married and um, when we got pregnant, um, we went through IVF there. So I am just painting this bright red. I had a crimson red chalk paint 
And then once that's dry, I'm just going to hot glue the word love right down here in the middle of the square sign. It's just the right size for this size sign. And then we're gonna decorate it with candy hearts. These are the ones that come in the boxes. They do look to be about the same size. Um, I couldn't find the box ones at Dollar Tree either, but they did have those as Target as well. I'm just gonna decorate the sides. I kind of have a little bit of extra room here on the sides. So I start with all four corners and we're just gonna glue the little candy hearts on here. And then I thought it needs maybe like a little bit more candy hearts. So I'm actually gonna do a couple more and just kind of frame it out here. Four fits really nicely on this size. And again, just attaching those with hot glue. And the pink vinyl worked great for that. I mean, it gave me a nice solid background for my sign. Um, didn't have to paint it, so that was a win. That looks good. I think that's going to be perfect for the tear tray. We're going to start here on the bottom. You can see that I already tied the garland onto the second tier. And again, this is my really large tear tray that I was decorating for my kitchen table. So here's our little love conversation heart sign. Super easy and cute with Dollar Tree supplies. Now up next, I wanted to do a little candle for it. And I found the great like little light pink heart shaped candle holder from the Dollar Tree. So I also picked up like an ivory like vanilla scented candle to kind of go with it. And then we can add conversation hearts actually just to the candle. I thought that'd be fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump out some more of these little conversation hearts. And I was trying to decide what would work better if I were to melt um, the sides of the candle to attach the little conversation hearts or if I should use hot glue. So at first I decided to try to melt it with just my heat gun um, to see if that would work. And it kind of did, but then they started kind of falling off a little bit. So I'll show you the difference. Um, if you just heat it a little bit, you can get your wax to melt where you can attach your little candy heart to the side. And I thought that was going to work because it definitely worked on the first couple, but then they started falling off. So I do switch to hot glue here in a second, and I think that might have worked a little bit better. As you can see, kind of probably when I got the wax hot again, it's going to kind of melt it. So I decided to reinforce it with hot glue and I'm just doing kind of a random pattern. Um, just kind of like they're sprinkled on the side of the candle. And even with the hot glue, it was a little tricky getting them glued down, but I was able to get it. So I'm just gonna cover, I want it to kind of look like it's sprinkled on there if I can. And again, just kind of um, giving it a random pattern and then making sure it's good and stuck before I move on to the next one. And you're really only gonna be able to see this um, from the front and the side, so that's really the only areas I covered with the conversation hearts. I was trying to make sure that I didn't run out of them on this DIY. But I think that's enough, and just putting it on the little heart candle holder. You can also glue some on top if you want, it will kind of interfere with the uh, burning if you do it on the top, but I'm not gonna plan to burn this one. I just kind of wanted it for decoration purposes. And we're gonna sit it right over here next to our little love sign. And I love how this tear tray turned out. I think it was really sweet. Lots of fun Dollar Tree DIYs. Now for the next item, I found this little love sign. I actually got this at the Crafter Square. Um, not necessarily Valentine's Day, but I thought it was perfect. I wanna kind of just leave the base of it wood and then we can just paint the love like a pastel color. I'm gonna use the Caribbean blue, trying to stay with the same like pastel colors that I was using on this tear tray. And just using a makeup sponge, we're just gonna paint the word love. And then um, it's a little short of a sign and my galvanized metal um, tear tray has sides. So I needed to raise it up some way because I thought it was gonna be covered up. And so I just use a little Jenga block from Five Below. I just wanted like a little block of wood to raise mine up. And so I'm gonna go ahead and attach that to the bottom of the sign. We're also gonna decorate it, of course, with conversation heart. So I'm just gonna use some hot glue and kind of um, just put a couple of these on here, decorating the letters, giving them that fun conversation heart feel and just a very quick, easy DIY. 
I'm going to go ahead and glue on my block just to kind of boost this up. Um, so you'll be able to see it from the outside of my tear tray. Easy peasy little love sign with just a few candy hearts. And um, I'm going to put it right over here. And now you can kind of see why I had to do that block on the bottom so that it's not all hidden by the sides of my tear tray. Now for the next DIY, I wanted to make a cute little pillow. Sometimes I like doing pillows on my tear tray. And I found this great baby blanket at Dollar Tree with all the pastel color hearts all over it. I thought this would be cute to do just like a little heart shaped pillow out of this fleece baby blanket. And so I'm just gonna use a Dollar Tree wood sign that I had just as a template. I just wanted something about the right size heart shape that I could kind of use as a little bit of a pattern. And I just used the Sharpie to sketch that out. I folded my baby blanket in half so I could go ahead and cut both pieces at the same time. And I'm just cutting that heart shape out, trying to cut all of the Sharpie off. So you can't see that in the end. And we're gonna do a really simple little no-sew pillow. Um, I like doing that on my tear trays, especially my larger tear trays, especially like behind things, kind of fills in the space. And it's just a fun thing to do on a tear tray, a little pillow. So I did half of the heart with hot glue and just laid the other layer right on top, gluing half of that together. And then I'm gonna leave part of it open so that I can stuff it, but glue down most of the heart. And I always like to save my old belt bed pillows for polyfill, but you know, you can get polyfill at Dollar Tree occasionally. I've seen it there a few times lately. And go ahead and fill up my little no-sew pillow until it is nice and full. And then I can finish it by just hot gluing the top of my heart back together. I told you it was gonna be easy, a little easy no-sew heart pillow. The pastel hearts and stuff on there, really cute. Kind of reminds me of the candy hearts, the conversation hearts. And I think this will look really cute there on that bottom tier of the tear tray. Super cute and easy. And we're gonna put it right back here up against the pole and it looks really good behind that little love sign that was a little bit shorter. We still have some room to decorate down here and I had this little tinsel heart sign. It was just the right size. It was way too blingy though for what we were going with the conversation hearts. So I'm gonna try to DIY it and try to make it look like a conversation heart if I can. So I actually had a little galvanized metal heart from the Dollar Tree and some of these little canvas bags from the Dollar Tree. It had like a pink heart on it and I thought I could just cut out the front of the bag and we could use that to cover the little galvanized metal heart right like that. You could always cover wood heart too if you had like a little wood heart. But basically I'm trying to make a cover for the front of that tinsel heart. Um, to kind of go more with my theme, less the sparkly glitz and more of the conversation heart. So I just glued that down with some Mod Podge and then I can trim off the excess fabric from my little bag. I like DIYing with those Dollar Tree bags. You can make some really cute stuff with it. And as you can see, that totally has a different feel than that um, blingy heart. Now the pot was also blingy and so I'm gonna try to cover that up with some of the light pink velvet ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Um, a little tricky to get it to go around this shape, but I just trimmed off a little bit where I could kind of pull it tight and then um, glue this down, kind of covering the bottom of the pot and it gives us that softer feel. So this little tinsel heart was the right size for my tear tray. It just was not the right style. And so just trying to give it a quick little makeover here if we can. Now the base was a little hard to make it stand up. <laughs> I actually had one of these little wood lemon heart stickers from the Dollar Tree that I actually glued to the bottom just to make it more stable. I probably should have cut off the excess velvet um, ribbon that might have helped. And then I just used a red Sharpie and then we can just put a little message on here, like a little candy heart. And I just put be mine on mine, just in some block letters, to kind of make it look like a candy heart. And I'm just gonna attach that with hot glue right on top of my tinsel heart, like that. As you can still, there's still lots of bling. So I had another one of the galvanized metal hearts um, 
from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree, I glued to the back, kind of sandwiching that together. It's kind of, um, you could use that wood heart that we used for the um, Candy Heart Topiary. That'd be really cute on a tear tray as well. And then I put a couple of the little candy hearts down in the pot, even though it was glittery down there. I didn't mind that too much. But I do still have some of the fabric that we used from the fabric bag. So I cut down some strips so I could kind of cover the sides of this too. Kind of sandwiching that in and making it way less sparkly and a little bit more burlap. And I cut a strip for both sides, doing the sides of the heart. And glue down the little candy hearts right there to the base. And pop this back on there. It wanted to kind of fall off on me. It looks nothing like it started with, but it does kind of go with the candy heart theme. So I think we're going to be able to put this like right over here on the tear tray. I have done lots of Valentine's Day tear trays. I'll have to be doing a Valentine's Day tear tray video soon. Um, I know it's always a popular theme to decorate with. And for the next DIY, I wanted to make a little Valentine's Day gnome. So I had a little gnome left over from Christmas that I'm basically just going to borrow the beard from because I wanted to do a sock gnome. So I found these great pink fuzzy socks at the Dollar Tree. And then I also found a burp cloth from the Dollar Tree that has that same pastel heart pattern. So I'm going to put a little bit of bath salts from the Dollar Tree in the bottom. You can use pebbles, rocks, whatever you got. Just something to weigh down the bottom of your sock. And then I'm going to use some polyfill from a pillow to build a little sock gnome. They're so easy to make. And once I get it the right size, I'm just going to take a zip tie around the sock and tie that off just like that. I can cut off the excess material of the sock and we have the body of the gnome. Now this is the burp cloth. You could also, I guess, use the baby blanket. It is the same pattern, but this is a little bit less fuzzy. I thought it'd be a little bit easier to work with to make a little um, hat for our gnome. So I have mine like um, folded in half and I'm just gonna cut, you know, a long pointy triangle like a gnome hat like that. And we're gonna do a really simple gnome hat. Again, no sew. Very similar how we did the little no sew pillow just by doing a bead of hot glue on the left and the right seams, making a cute little gnome hat for our gnome. And I thought we can make it kind of go with that pastel conversation heart theme that we are doing on this um, tear tray today. So I can go ahead and put my hat on, see if it's gonna fit. I think I made mine a little too long, so I just trimmed mine up a little bit. And then I'm gonna put a little polyfill in there to kind of make it stand up a little bit to see what I think about that. Just kind of pushing that down right inside, giving it that classic gnome hat shape. And I am borrowing the beard for my gnome, but you can do the beard out of so many different things. For the very tip of the hat, I wanted to do a little pom-pom. I have some of these little pink pom-pom garlands from the Dollar Tree and I went ahead and hot glued one to the end just for a little festive, touch to his hat and then I told you I was going to borrow the beard I'm just going to do that with my heat gun trying to melt the glue just peel the beard off I wasn't going to use this little guy so I thought I might as well be able to use his little beard and I can also kind of reuse his nose he actually had arms too which is kind of a nice thing to have when you're crafting gnomes a lot of times I use like the little gnome stockings from the Dollar Tree when I DIY my gnomes for a beard. And sometimes I use like the little microfiber mop heads for beards, just whatever I can find from Dollar Tree. And it was all kind of stuck together. So I'm just kind of trimming it down till I just get the beard and the nose. That's all I really need. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue the beard onto the sock, the little pink body of our little gnome. Also the little pom-pom they had for the nose. You can also use a wood bead for that if you're making a gnome. And I decided against the arms because they were a little too dark. I didn't want to have to recover them. And then we can put the little gnome hat right on. I'm going to hot glue that down to the sock to make sure it stays in place. And it kind of has like just a random rough border around the edges, but we are going to do like a brim to the hat that's gonna kind of go over the little gnome or gonk nose um, and kind of clean that all up a little bit. 
I'm also going to glue it here to the back to make sure it stays in place. And this is the sock that we cut off earlier. I'm just going to use the band that was at the end, cut off a strip, and it's going to make the perfect brim of the hat that I can just put right down on top, hot gluing that to the side of the nose, <laughs> and helping finish off our little Valentine's Day gnome. I love a good gnome for any holiday and anytime I can incorporate one into a tear tray, I definitely try to do it. I think he's really fun. Now I wanted to put a candy heart on his hat to kind of make him go with the theme a little bit more. So I just glued one right there to the brim and he is the perfect size to kind of finish off the neck, the bottom tier here of our tear tray. And then we're going to have two more tiers to decorate with more conversation heart Valentine's Day DIYs. I was trying to decide if I wanted his beard to kind of hang off like that, which is kind of cute, or if I wanted to kind of leave it a little bit more inside. <laughs> Isn't he sweet? Okay, next DIY was so easy. They have so many things like this at Dollar Tree right now. These are the EXO bath bombs, and I thought we could do this, I like a really cute little EXO sign with these, um, kind of using them off-label, not really using them as a bath bomb, but using them for decor. So I'm gonna combine two of those letters with one of the little Jenga blocks from Five Below, and I'm just gonna simply hot glue those on to make a really easy little tear tray sign. Can't get much easier than that, right? So I glue on the XO. They have a lot of spa stuff like this I've decorated with before. Um, really cute sizes for tear trays. And then I'm going to decorate the front of the wood block with more of the conversation hearts to kind of continue that theme. And we have a great little small sign for the middle tier of the tear tray, which says XO. So you can kind of see that wooded bead conversation heart garland a little bit better now. We're going to put this one right about here. And next DIY, this is another one of the wood hearts from the Dollar Tree like we used for the topiary DIY. And we're gonna make like it into a little conversation heart. So I'm using that bright yellow that we also used for um, the conversation heart garland. And we're just gonna paint all over on this. It, it does kind of have a beveled edge, but anytime you're gonna have like a chunky heart, it's gonna give you kind of that appearance of a conversation heart. And so we're just gonna kind of hand paint it. Something super easy, but just a quick, easy, little Dollar Tree DIY sign for a Valentine's Day tear tray. That yellow color is so pretty. I did go over it with a couple coats just to make sure I had a nice blank surface. And then using my Sharpie, I just put XO, XO on here. Again, you can put just about any message you want on there. Just in some black letters to kind of make it look like it's stamped on there. And I didn't think that was quite noticeable enough, so I did go over mine with a red paint pen too, just to make it pop a little bit more. And there's the message for our little conversation heart. Now I do want it to stand up since it's going on our tear tray. And so to do that, I'm just going to attach it to another one of those wood blocks from Five Below. I love those things. I stock up on those every spring at Five Below. You get a great big box of those. And this is how it turned out. We're gonna go ahead and put this on the second tier as well to continue our little conversation heart theme. And I love those little wood heart signs. They're so cute, so versatile. Now on to the next DIY. We're gonna fill up the rest of this tier. This is one of the little Valentine book stacks from the Dollar Tree. I'm not gonna remake it too much. I'm just gonna add a little bit of a conversation heart um, DIY to it because it's already got the whites and the pinks. It says, be mine forever, lots of love. So it's already got kind of a Valentine's Day saying on it. I'm just gonna take some burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Mine was a little thicker than I wanted. I'm just gonna trim it down. I just wanted something simple to kind of make it look like the books are kind of tied together. So I take that strip of burlap and glue that, attaching it to the bottom of my book stack. And if you wanted to kind of remake yours and do like the same colors, that you were doing um, on your conversation hearts like we did before, you totally could, but I thought it was kind of really cute on its own, so I didn't go too crazy on that. 
And then for little decorations, we're gonna again use the little candy hearts by gluing those onto the burlap ribbon. Super sweet and easy. I just wanna kinda of alternate colors, make them look like they're kind of falling down the front. And just a quick, easy makeover of this. And kind of gluing that down a little bit so it's a little bit tighter there to the top of my book stack. And then we're also gonna attach some more of the little candy hearts right here on top. And I always like to decorate the top of my book stacks too. I think that looks really cute. I also have some of these little intricate woodcut hearts, the craft board from the Dollar Tree. And I just glued a couple of those on top too, just to give it a little bit more character. And a book stack is always great for a tear tray. It's just the right size, I think, for the second tier. And we're just gonna kind of work this in here. You can kind of have it hang off the side a little bit like that if you'd like make it a little bit more visible, especially when you're working with a tear tray like that that has sides. But I think it definitely goes well with the conversation heart theme and I love the little, the little hearts on there. Now for the next sign, I wanted to do like a jar of candy hearts. I had a leftover jar sign from Christmas, so you can kind of use any season that you might have. And we're just gonna kind of remake it. So I start just by removing the twine, the tag that was on the back of it. And I didn't really wanna try to cover up that happy holiday pattern on the back. So I'm just gonna mask it with some cheap, cheap contact paper. Um, and that's gonna be the back of the jar just using a sanding block to cut that down to size. Since it is on a tear tray, I did want it to have like a finished back, not really have like a Christmas background on there if I could. And then we can just decorate the back of this. I'm gonna use that same like celery green, pastel green color that we used for the candy heart garland and paint the little jar that color. Trying to stick with the pastel color scheme for all these DIYs. We've done pink, we've done the yellow. So I wanted to do a green jar. And it did require a couple coats to cover that MDF there on the back of our little jar sign. But I thought a jar of candy hearts would be perfect. And then I just used a pink paint pen and I'm gonna do like a Ray Dunn font. I just put candy hearts on mine. Super easy, a little bit shorter than saying conversation hearts, kind of the same message. And then we can decorate, of course, our little candy heart jar with some of the candy hearts. So I'm just gonna attach those to the front with hot glue. Just kind of stagger those along just for decoration. And kind of anywhere where I can kind of fit some. Now for the top part, I'm gonna replace the twine on here. I kind of did this step, I think, out of order because I did forget that I kind of wanted to make the top of the jar silver like it was on the back, but I just wrapped it around with twine, tied that off, and then to kind of um, finish that off, I used one of the little wood hearts from the Dollar Tree in pink and glued that right there where it came together. And that's when I was decided, oh yeah, I wanted to make the top of the jar silver. And I do have some silver like acrylic paint. So I'm gonna try, even though I've already got the twine and everything on there, just to add a little bit of silver here to the top. To kind of make it look like a jar lid, but you probably should do that step first. But it wasn't too late. So there's our little jar of candy heart sign. So easy, just using a leftover jar sign I had from Christmas and I think it turned out really cute. It's just the right size to finish off, I think our second tier here. And just a fun variety of candy heart DIYs for this tear tray. Now for the top, I don't have a lot of space up there, but I kind of wanted to stick with like the conversation heart theme. And I found these yard stakes at Dollar Tree that um, are really cute. They already have like the messages on there. They're the pastel colors. So I'm gonna do them back to back on my top tier. And so I just popped the sticks off the back. Now, the only thing I didn't like about them is that they were glittery and I hadn't really used any glitter on my projects today. So I'm gonna try to mute that down a little bit if I can. 
Um, you could also use like the, they have the conversation hearts that are a little thicker that stand on their side from Dollar Tree. That would be really cute on a tear tray as well. But I kind of wanted something big that was going to fill it up all the way. To tone down the glitter, I'm just going to go over it with some matte Mod Podge to see if we can kind of make that sparkle a little less because I wasn't really going for the theme of the glitter on this one for sure. But I do like these signs and I think they're going to work well. So I just went over the whole thing with matte Mod Podge and um, kind of tried to mute the glitter. I guess it works a little bit. I did a nice thick coat on both, gave it a quick dry, and then I was like, they still look glittery. <laughs> so I'm just going to go in with some of that crimson paint, a small paintbrush, and I just kind of updated mine a little bit. When you paint over the glitter, for sure it's going to help mask it a lot better than before. And so that's what I did. I mean, if you like the glitter, definitely leave it. But I was trying to go with kind of just a traditional um, conversation heart theme, a little bit less on the glitter bling for this tear tray. And I went ahead and did the same thing here on the second sign. And I'm just going to have these like kind of back to back going the same direction on my top tier. And I'm just going to kind of do that with some double sided tape. And my tear tray kind of has a pole in the middle. So I just kind of want to um, adhere them to that so it doesn't kind of tip over. This is going to be on my table. But just a quick, easy Dollar Tree hack here for some conversation heart signs like that. And then it'll be like, you know, the same from the front and the back. Now for filler, I didn't have too many candy hearts left over at this point. So I also had some of this party table scatter from Dollar Tree. And I liked the pink. I thought that went well with my theme, but not necessarily the gray. So I just went ahead and kind of separated mine. And we can use that pink. I think it kind of looks like candy as filler for the tear tray. And then also the remaining conversation hearts that we have. And that's really the last step in this DIY. Um, be sure to stick around for the final reveal coming up here in a minute to see how this tear tray came together. I think it turned out really cute. So I just sprinkled in like the little pink um, beads to kind of replicate candy. If you had enough conversation hearts, they definitely would make really good filler for this theme. But since I had so much kind of open space here on the top, I wanted to fill it up a little bit. And then I sprinkled the conversation hearts that I had left over on the top. I always like to use a little bit of filler on tear trays to kind of fill in any areas where there isn't anything to provide another little fun festive touch. So I'm going to do the same thing here for the other tiers. And lots of fun little Dollar Tree DIYs on this tear tray. So I wanted to make sure to include this with my Conversation Heart DIYs that I just made for this year because I think they go nicely together. So you've made it all the way to the final reveal. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to include your favorite DIY in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to hit that like button. Enjoy the final reveal. Give me love, give me all your love, oh, cause I want you. No one else makes me feel this way. Stay here with you All that we 
So much for watching and I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my Crafty Beach Fun members for supporting my channel. Thank you so much to Coastal Couple, Karen O'Haran, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Vernon Noctegal, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Whitney Harrison, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Tina Kane, Heather Hart, and our newest member, Sandy C. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it so much. If you would like to become a member, all you have to do is hit the join button under this video. You can cancel anytime, and it's a great way to get some early ad-free access to my next video. And if you'd like some more crafting DIYs here at Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting and happy Valentine's Day.